are watching a King's Love Convos. So today's video is going to be um, the problematic purity culture. Um, I am so passionate about this topic. <laughs> uh, so if I'm a little bit spicy, um, just know that it's coming from a place of prayer and passion, okay? What is purity culture? So purity culture is a term, and this is a definition that I found on the Gospel Coalition website. Um, it is the term often used for the evangelical movement that attempts to promote a biblical view of purity by discouraging dating and promoting virginity before marriage, often through the use of tools such as purity pledges, symbols such as purity rings, and events such as purity balls. So I'm going to add a little bit more to that definition, um, and, it, and especially in the context of Christian women, because that's usually who I like to talk to. I like to talk to my sisters. I would say that it is the idea or the gospel or the theology that the false theology that our salvation, our value in God, our right standing with God is based on our ability to be celibate rather than based on his blood. Let's start with the foundation of the gospel. Gospel is believing in Jesus Christ. We are made right with God by repenting from our sins and um, believing in the Son of God. We are saved by faith, period. What purity culture does is it subtly communicates, it may not overtly say it, but it's a subtle communication that our, our right standing with God um, is in our ability to cross all of our teeth and dot all of our eyes as a single woman. Um, and so um, it makes Boaz Jesus, <laughs> okay? So, you know, the whole idea of Ruth and Boaz and you know how we kind of take that story and, and, and create this kind of fairy tale. It, it makes Boaz the savior. And so if you're doing all of the right things, you're going to be blessed enough to get Boaz. And so it's not about discipleship. It's not about just submission to God holistically in every area. It's you do this, you don't kiss, you don't hold hands, you don't do anything remotely sexual, <laughs> and God is going to bless you with the Boaz. Two, it makes God a debtor and us the debt collector who gets frustrated when God doesn't make a payment in the form of a specific blessing that we asked him for. And so usually when we talk about false gospels, we talk about the prosperity gospel in the context of, you know, money, right? Like this whole idea, like if you come to God, he's going to make you rich, he's going to make you um, wealthy, and he's going to give you all of these great material things. But that also includes the idea, which, which is, I kind of lump it in the same same group as the prosperity gospel, the idea that if you do X, Y, and Z, God has to, or God is indebted to us. And so when we don't get the fairy tale that we we were working for all of these years, um, then we're upset at God, or we feel frustrated, or we feel disappointed because we listen to people who make promises on God's behalf that he never explicitly stated in his word. That blessing, like I said, may come in the form of a marriage that you're expecting, or an Instagram-worthy marriage, or this just perfect life that God never promised us. And so this is why I'm so passionate about sound theology, especially amongst us women, and being so careful with who we listen to and who we glean from. Three, it replaces the finished work of Jesus with the progressive work of us. So it makes us our own savior. You know, it's, it's what you do, what you don't do. Those are the things that uh, determine whether or not you're right with God. It makes marriage heaven and singleness hell. It makes, you know, singleness the wilderness and marriage the promised land that you're working and you're striving to get to um and it uses fear and legalism to to bring about obedience i sense that i that there is like an exodus of women um young single women who are either one leaving the church or two feeling like they have to start their christian walk all over again because as we live life and as we um, mature in our faith, we start to look back and examine 
everything that we believed in and what our foundation is. And we kind of sit back and we're like, hold up. You just you just experience things and you realize that things are not this cookie cutter perfect I'm gonna put the coin in the slot machine and get this back from God type of thing I remember about six years ago I was in a relationship and um, you know we had decided that we weren't gonna kiss until marriage and that did not last long <laughs> And I remember when, after we kissed, I had, I had gone home and I remember I had felt so much guilt and shame and condemnation. And if you've been following me for a while, I'm a writer, like I love to write. I'm always posting on Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter and things that God's laid on my heart and revelations that I believe that he's given me to, to talk about. And I remember feeling like such a fraud I remember feeling like I never wanted to talk about God again. I never wanted to get on any type of platform and, and post Bible verses or post revelation. I felt like I was, I, I was fake, you know, all because I had believed that, you know, if you kissed someone, if you're dating, you kissed a man, you, you kissed your boyfriend that, you know, that pretty much is just the end of of it all. You know, you're pretty, you might as well just hang it up and throw, throw it away. And there was little to no room for, one, it is not a sin. <laughs> so some people, they may not agree, but that is not, I think we need to be so careful of listening to people who preach their opinions instead of preaching the word or who preach their story as gospel. We have to remember that testimonies are not templates, that God can get the glory out of anything. We attach these legalistic standards on everybody to make it seem like if you do this, if you do that, if you do this, God can't use you, it's wrong, just throw it away, you ain't worth it. It's so damaging, it is so damaging to women because like I said, I feel like there is an excess. I see it, I see it, I get the messages of women feeling like like they just have to start all over and I just want to encourage those of you who feel that way that even in the midst of maybe you um, falling into that trap or being in error or maybe having all of these beliefs within your faith that were not theologically sound that God was still with you in that God did not leave you or forsake you. It does not mean you were fake. It does not mean you were a fraud. It, it's a lesson for us to read the word for ourselves. <laughs> um, somebody asked me in that, you know, that little Instagram asked me a question thing. Um, I think they asked me what was one of the most important spiritual things that I've learned in my walk. And I said um, to not solely depend on spiritual leaders to, to feed me because Till this day, I feel like there is a lot of false teaching that I'm having to unlearn. Um, and again, that's why I'm so passionate about like sound theology and women getting into the word themselves and re reading it for what it is, not someone else's interpretation, not even your own interpretation, but through prayer and, and, and research and history and understanding what the text actually means because bad theology distorts the lens by which we see God. So if we read scripture and we just interpret it um, as, oh, okay, God is just a God who is full of condemnation and no grace, that's how you're gonna see God. Or if you look at God as, as, God, as a God who is just a genie, but he's not Lord, that's how you're gonna see God. Romans 3.22 says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. Right now I'm reading Romans and I think it's a great book to, um, to read constantly over and over again because it presents or it gives the theological framework and the foundation of what the gospel is, what it means, why we are saved, how we are saved, and I, it, it, it's the perfect foundation for truly, truly allowing that to take root into our hearts. Um, and so again, I wanna encourage um, all of us or you know, women out there, you feel like you need to start all over or you feel like all of this weight and all of this shame because you, know, you, you, you don't know what to do with your, 
your sexual feelings or your desires. Sexual desire is natural. <laughs> like, no, we would not be here if two if our parents didn't have sex. Okay, that is the avenue through which God created for life to be born. But God created it within a uh, with parameters around it, within a marriage structure for man and woman to come together in bliss and in enjoyment of each other and procreation and fruitfulness to enjoy each other within that parameter. So, you know, those desires are natural and they're real and, and, and they're okay. Don't put your value and don't put, you know, your, 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 your entire salvation and your ability to wait well for a husband. Um, I encourage you if you feel disappointed by God, examine what your expectations were and whether or not that was an expectation that someone told you was guaranteed based on your works or was that a promise explicitly stated in his word. I just wanna encourage you guys with that. I want to encourage you to read uh, The Capitalization of uh, Christian Purity. It is um, a blog post that I wrote um, a couple of, of mm, a couple years ago. Dang, I wrote that a while ago. There's a, there's a market for it. There's a reason why the women, young women are being targeted and we're kind of dangling marriage in the face of young single women. Um, and people are making money off of it. People are making money off of the idea and selling women a fantasy that if you do everything as the perfect Christian girl, God is going to give you everything that you want. And that is basically a pretty packaged prosperity gospel. I just want us to, to focus, get back on the foundation. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, and I believe that God is, you know, calling his daughters to focus and to, to get to know him for yourself, um, to maybe get off of Instagram for a little bit and uh, really get into the word and get back to the heart of the father. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next I video. Was created for your glory.